Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Wrestling Diaries, the podcast show for the average Joe. I'm your host, Mitchell Rue Lane. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. If you really want to help us grow, write a review. You don't have to send money and all this other stuff. If you just give us a good review, you'll help us grow in the community and on the interwebs and all that stuff. Write us a good review. We'd really appreciate it. If you also want to see the video content, see all these beautiful faces talking to me about the things they wrestle with in life, check us out on YouTube. Like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell for more content we release weekly. Follow us, love us, like us. I have a good dear friend, her second time to be on my podcast show, Miss Daria Albers. <laughs> Daria, Daria, Daria. Hello, Hello my what dear. Hello. Nice to How, see you again. <laughs> it is great to see you as well. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show again. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So catch, catch us up to speed. Uh, the last time you were on the show was a little bit later last year, or not too late. Um, you were like our number 12th guest. And now you're here past the 50s with us. Uh, what, what's uh, changed in your life? What's new? You were, you were doing your mindfulness, uh, what is it, the mindfulness coaching or something like that? Are you still doing that? Yeah, the Mindful Athlete Program. Still working on it. And uh, we are launching a new program on the website. The website is right now under construction. DariaAlbus.com, so people can see it soon and uh, follow my program. Uh, I was actually working the whole year on some new stuff and um, this was a year of, or half year since we saw uh, a lot of growth, yeah, a lot of uh, transition, a bit of transformation, I would say. <laughs> yeah, some deep time, deep thinking time. Okay. Wow. So what have you transformed into? What are, what are you now? How are you different? You seem more, um, there is something that seems different about you, but I can't put my finger on it. I don't know what it is. Hmm. <laughs> You're Hopefully more mature not. than you were before. No, I feel oh like you've, always, you've was, always been mature. <laughs> I was just about to say, please don't say something like that. More mature, <laughs> more serious. No way. <laughs> please don't do this. No, um, uh, yeah, but it was, um, you know, a year of um, a lot of, since I'm in MMA, right? A lot of my fighters didn't have fights. A lot of my clients struggled with a long period of, uh, not competing, not fighting in their sport. Um, so that was quite hard for them. And I have, uh, as a mental performance coach, I keep the space for them, right? I hold the space and I'm there for them. And um, yeah, it was not easy. And then um, after now, when it went a little bit back to normal now, like more events are starting now, then we had a lot of injuries and a lot of emotional stuff going on. So it was quite a turbulent time. And since uh, you know a little bit about what I'm doing, I'm very close to my clients because it's it's MMA, right? It's a very hard sport. It's an extreme sport. It's uh, maybe a little bit different than mental performance coaching for golf or basketball. It's just like it's a, it's a really brutal sport, right? So we're very close and there's a lot of things we go together uh, through. So I, I go with them through it. And yeah, I had to actually, I had to step up my game a lot in this year because I didn't have to deal with so many emotions usually in those big boys. <laughs> so <laughs> The big boys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. for people, this is your second time to be on my show, but for people, there's probably a good handful of people that are listening to this for the first time. Uh, so Daria, everybody, is a uh, former kickboxing, um, professional kickboxer, and then she trained striking for mixed, mar mixed martial arts people as well as yeah, just, you know what, tell everybody, give everybody a, a brief uh, summary of what you do exactly for people listening to this for the very first time. So, yeah, as you said, I, I was a wrong. professional. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all right. Um, yeah, I was a former professional fighter, a kickboxer, um, fought for many, many years of my life. Um, then I quit fighting and in between, I studied uh, physical therapy and then psychology. And then I went into more spiritual practice like mindfulness. And I'm a mindfulness teacher now. And uh, yeah, this is what I do. I train the big boys and the big MMA guys in striking, the kickboxing aspect of MMA. And uh, I do their mental performance, everything about uh, cognitive conditioning, 
uh, about uh, yeah, mental training, focus training, concentration, but also more classical psychology. Depends what nice. they need. I uh, I don't think I asked you this on our our previous episode, but what made you get? Why did you uh, retire from kickboxing professionally? What made you want to just go into training and then go into like psychology and stuff like that? What was the reason for that? Um, actually, like parallel in my career, I think um, due to my kickboxing ca- career, um, uh, during it, I um, struggled a lot with uh, the mental performance. It was never like the physical part. Uh, besides the uh, cutting weight, and we talked about that. The weight cut is always really hard, but that's for everybody. And um, uh, yeah, like when the pressure, when I got higher in the rankings and the opponents got um, tougher, the pressure was hard for me to deal with. And um, yeah, parallel to this, I started um, studying psychology and evolved that part, <laughs> or um, yeah, that part of me. Um, and then I had uh, a lot of injuries. There was like one or two years actually where I had like uh, problems with the knees and then with the foot, I broke my foot and I had a broken hand. And oh my God, it was just like one injury after the other. And uh, that's like six years ago. I'm 37 now. I think six years ago I did my last fight. So yeah, and then I decided just like, okay, it's time because I was coaching already. Um, I was a coach and I'm a much more um, natural coach than a fighter, for sure. And for me, I was, yeah, I was fighting the top level girls in the world, but I was not good enough for number one, for sure. And it was time for me, okay, to do the transition to coach full time. And I honestly it was a very, very good decision because I'm a, yeah, I just love coaching. You, I guess you just didn't want to hang in there for too long. You kind of felt like you, you reached a certain point and now it was time to get off the ride or whatever. Yeah. I think it's like about letting go, right? Because the mm-hmm. ego, you know how it is, right? You're a fighter. You you identify so much with being a fighter, with being super fit, with looking fit, uh, carrying yourself in a certain way. And it's, you have to be careful because you identify and a lot of fighters have that with so much of your life means just being a fighter, but we are multidimensional beings, right? We are much more than just fighters. And, um, it uh, was the process of how to go. And um, yeah, I was lucky because I did all my meditations. I did a bit of mindfulness before. So uh, the transition was okay for me. I was, I was fine. It was good time to let go. And I think hmm, when you don't reach your full potential, which I didn't, and I know it, you will always go back in your mind and thinking, oh, and there's something still you need to accomplish. You go, but you have to be careful which one is like the true self and which one is your ego speaking. So, yeah. Do you know a lot of people in your field um, mm-hmm. that you think stuck around too long? That they didn't, they didn't get out in time and now they're just kind of, I don't know, hurting themselves? Do you know a lot of people like that? Yeah, there are a few. A few for sure. But why do you, why it, do you think they, uh, they still stick around with it? It gives them some kind of purpose or something like that? It gives them purpose. It gives them structure in their life. It gives them also, again, what I just said about the ego, right? Mm -hmm. We identify a lot of them and you feel like when the ego is too strong, you know, in uh, sports psychology, you see, uh, you say performer self and the real self, right? You need the performer self, the the one you switch on when you go in there and the performer self can get very dominant, right? And that's what a lot of fighters, um, they can't let go of it because the performer selves took over or the ego. And uh, then they just keep going because they think they're nothing without it, right? When they stop fighting, they're nothing. Then also uh, for the top level fighters is still also a money thing, which I think we can all understand. They get paid very well. And uh, if they didn't care really about building something next to this career, if they didn't look in the future a lot, of, co- of course, there's a lot of pressure to 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 provide for your family. There's a, there's a lot of things coming together. But I think the most is really being used to be in the spotlight, having this adrenaline, having this like clear goal, right? Because when you prepare for a fight, there's nothing. And that's why it's hard and then easy at one because your focus is so narrow and so clear and so strong on one goal you have that you – just zoom out, right? You you don't have to deal basically with other things in life. Uh, where we sometimes, when we're not so much focused, we you know how it is, we go left and right and we lose it a little bit. But when you have this one particular goal, you just go. And 
of course it's hard for the body because you train and you do everything just it's all about the fight for months over months but like i said and for some people that's exactly what they need because they can't deal with the with the other dimensions of being human or being alive yeah wow you think you'll do this for the rest of your life still uh, train fighters and stuff like that martial arts mm. I think or I will be always, Maybe the question should be, would you like to do it for the rest of your life? How does that look? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, not training, maybe not training. As a striking coach, right? I mean, there will be an age where I can't hold the pads for the guys anymore, obviously. But, but uh, being in the sport, uh, I always tell, when I teach my seminars and workshops, I always tell them, basically, for me, the, the MMA, MMA or the Muay Thai is just a tool for teaching philosophy, right? Philosophy of life, how to walk really through life. There's, I mean, that's why it's martial arts. If you really, really go deep into it, right? You learn the philosophy about the martial arts to be a true warrior. And that's a beautiful thing. And that I never want to lose that in my life, for sure. This connection to the philosophy of it, to the lifestyle, to all those values we have, right? It, it, it saved my life. I said it, said it in so many workshops and podcasts. Mm -hmm. It just saved my life because I was lost. I was definitely lost as a young girl. And I will always give back to the sport. And this is what I do now. I try to influence and, uh, yeah, as much people in a positive way through the philosophy of martial arts. When you first got into kickboxing and then, um, I guess, also getting into actually competing, doing kickboxing, what did, did you have a lot of blowback, a lot of flack from, like, your family, your parents? Like what you're, what you're going to fight people? Why are you doing this? Did you deal with a lot of that stuff, or were they very supportive? Like, oh, good, yes, go out there and get uh, punch somebody in the face and get kicked in the head. <laughs> you know what? Um, my dad never liked it. He was always scared until I mean, he's not alive anymore. But uh, as long as he was alive, he never he came to one fight in my whole career, mm -hmm. and uh, he never liked it. He was scared. My mom. Uh, as you know, maybe a little bit, my biggest supporter. She's, my God, she's friends with all the fighters. She comes to the locker rooms for the smaller events. When I tape the hands, she's like uh, sitting next to me, giving me the tape, like supporting me, holding the bucket. Like, and, and the guys actually like it because it's this calming energy she has, yeah. especially the younger guys. They like that a lot. Um, does, yeah. your, does your mom, uh, does she, do you train your mom? I, does she, does she fight some? She train, she spar, she hit the bag. <laughs> You know, she does the pets with me sometimes. So, and she's really good, actually. And she was like, when she did it the first time, she's like, what do you think? I'm watching you for 20 years. I'm like, oh my God, okay. <laughs> but, yeah. She threw a good yeah. roundhouse. <laughs> Pivot her hips. <laughs> like a whip. Exactly <laughs> that. Cool. <laughs> yeah, she's super, super. She, it gives her so much energy to sport. So she supports us. But um, a lot of people also due to my character right a lot of people have to stereotype how a fighter should be and that's not always right and i was well, what, uh, what do they stereotype out. fighters as what's the stereotype you know a lot of people think like you have to be like from the beginning like almost like a fighter is born like a fighter yeah there are some that are born like fighters and some of us learn it they learn it along the way and mm -hmm. uh, there's always a discussion about that there will be always people who say no you're born like a fighter you can't learn it I do not believe that because of our, the neuroplasticity of our brain, right? The ability to change, to adapt and uh, to do like structural changes in our brain based on the input, right? This is what I work on. That's the base of my work, changing people, right? Changing people's lives and their brains and bodies. So I believe in change and that we can adapt. So we can grow into it for sure. But um, when I started, I did not show the typical characteristic of a fighter. So I was like, uh, I was an introvert. I didn't talk. I was super anxious. I was really insecure. I, oh my God, I was so insecure. And I cried sometimes after sparring when they kicked and hit me hard in the face. And I cried because I, not even just because of the physical pain, the emotional pain, right? I couldn't, like, for the first year or two, I was a mess. But I came back every day. And I always tell people, I came back every day. And even the, the group I trained um, with then, they were not very open-minded and not super welcome to women. And in general, not open-minded to understand that everybody grows in their own pace. 
right? They were all like more tough guys and they were like, oh, okay. They didn't, they never had to deal with a person like me who had to grow in it, right? Who had to overcome the fears every day. But I wanted it. There was something in me, deep in my heart. And I, I'm always so thankful for the universe who, that I just came back and always brought me back to it. So yeah, at the, at the first years, I didn't get a lot of support because it's not even the people's st- uh, fault, right? It was their belief system. They just didn't believe that someone can do it. And then when I showed that I can do it, okay, they got a little bit more open, but still yeah. they were always like, look, mm, we don't know. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> gotta feel, better, better, better. Yeah. sometimes gotta feel really good though. When people are, te- when you have detractors in life, right? They tell you, you can't do this. You can't go there. You can't be this. And then when you do do it, there's just something that tastes so sweet. It's like eating yeah. a big, piece of chocolate cake, right? Because they said all this stuff and now you're doing it. Now what do they say? They can be like, oh, well, I, I love seeing the people that in my life personally, from my own personal experience, when I've put my mind to something, someone's like, oh, you, you can't do that. That seems unrealistic or that's just, that's far-fetched or blah, blah, blah. And then I end up doing it. Then I go back to that person. I'm just like, hey, and I like, I don't know. They, they don't respond at all. They're just kind of like, oh, well, well, whatever. Some of them are like, oh, wow. Some of them are like, wow, you did do it. I'm completely amazed. I eat my words. I apologize. But I feel like a bulk yeah. of them are kind of like, oh, well, 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 whatever. You got lucky or something. Like, no, you know, f- you. Yes, yes, yes. How dare you? But like, yes. either way, it's just, it's something so sweet when you put your mind to do something and someone tells you you can't do it and then you do it. It just, the victory of that, it's just, it's so sweet. It's sweet. You know? I mean, basically, this is the topic of my life, right? Of my career. Look, uh, first, because I started in a group of people who didn't believe in it. Okay, I went through it, went to fight it. And they were like, oh, you can never be a professional. I got into professional fighting, did it. They still were like, mm, okay. Then I said, I want to be a coach. They said, you cannot be a coach. You're a female. Like how? Yeah, you can be a coach for female, right? Women kickboxing group. Okay. Uh, then I said, oh, I want to be a coach of the best fighters in the world, like in the UFC, in Bellator, Glory. And they said, again, you can't do it. I did it, right? I, it was always resistance. And so I'm the master of overcoming that resistance. Sometimes I cry, for sure. There are moments where I get really emotional and I, my God, I cry and I want to kick it. And then my mom is my best friend, actually, because she is the one who talks to me for 20 years and says, okay, if you want to drop it, drop it. But don't do it out of the emotions, stick a little bit and then I always <laughs> make it out of it but that's the top of my life people telling me I can't do it because of this because of that and I always did it and not the, the interesting thing is which I understood later it's not that I get motivated because they tell me I can't do it it's just like my true self the more I connect to my true self the more strong is just the force I can't I can't, cannot not do it because somehow my true inner self, my real me decides it wants to do something. The more I grow and evolve as a human being, the stronger that force gets and the easier it gets actually to overcome that resistance. But it was, it was such a long evolution, you know, to find that true self. Who is little Daria, right? Mm-hmm. Is she like, is she the coach? Is she the mental performance coach? Is she the little girl who wants to cuddle at home? right? Is she this? Is she that? It, it, it is such a, it's so interesting, right? We, we say in psychology sometimes or in philosophy that you, you're born with everything and then you, you know, you get programmed with all those programs, you get socialized and then, then uh, until you're seven, let's say, and then the rest of your life, you, you spend <laughs> unwrapping, right? you know, <laughs> taking off those programs and reprogramming yourself. And it feels like this. It's almost like layer by layer by layer, I'm taking off and the more layers I take off, the stronger I get and the stronger is this life force in me. It's such an energetic thing. It's, it's consciousness also, right? Yeah. It's the more conscious you get, it's such a spiritual path. That's why, you know, like my path in MMA, in martial arts, is such a spiritual path. Like it's all about the spirit me, the whole of me shining more bright. And yeah. Yeah, I get it. Not when yet. You go, too bright, when you go to that sweaty <laughs> gym that smells like sweat and blood, you're going to church. I got you. I understand. Exactly. That's a beautiful exactly. thing. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You're a beautiful thing. <laughs> it's so. I'm so glad to have you on here again. I missed you. 
I missed you. We don't uh, we don't right. connect as much. And we know we chatted a couple times. You uh, were getting my advice for um, what was it about a microphone? Because you were trying to record something. I don't know. If, did you ever get yes. that squared away? <laughs> did you get it taken yes. care of? Okay, good. But you know what? I decided I'm not using a microphone. I just talk to my phone. Just take the phone. Talk, talk to your phone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're doing a good job now. Well, you're using a, a computer right now, though, to talk to us, right? Yeah. 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 Now a Mac. A MacBook. Nice. Yeah. You know, if it was a large one, you'd have a big Mac. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> People are like, did he really just make that joke? I did. And I thought it was funny. And she did too. So sue me. I had to laugh, right? <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you have to laugh. It's it's part of the, you know, you come on. She signed a waiver. She has to laugh at all my stupid jokes and pretend like she likes me. It's part of the deal. If you're on the Wrestling Diaries. Boom. That's gotcha. <laughs> you're trapped. <laughs> oh, man. So yeah. tell me, where are you right now? Are you, are you in Germany still? You're in Germany no, right I, now? I, I'm in between Germany and Poland. Right now I'm in Poland. Okay. Always in between the countries. Do you, so, do you have like two homes? One in Poland, one in Germany. Yeah, that's right. Look at you, two homes in two different countries. What a badass! He's a yeah, big one badass. In <laughs> one in the middle yeah. of the city, one far away at the lake with the forest. It's oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah, you sent me the picture online when we were talking, and I guess it was of your bed, and then it was just. The open windows yeah. out to the oh, yeah. I saw that I melted, man. I love that. So yeah. so zen. It's so zen. Yeah, it's beautiful there. It's honestly. How's it your is. how's your how's your puppy? How's your dog? Very good. Thank you. We have three of them, so tell everybody doing- tell all those dog lovers out there about your dogs. And uh, people are like, Oh, she has dogs. What about her dogs? Obviously, there's the number one. The number one child is uh, Snowflake, <laughs> Snowflake, which is my nice name. favorite <laughs> child. You, should ha- you shouldn't have one, but it's Snowflake. I love her. She's a um, uh, Swiss Shepherd and I think Labrador mix. She's okay. the white one with the black eye. Yeah. She sees photos. She is the most loving dog ever. She's always positive. And the other ones are two Jack- little Jack Russell, and you know the Jack Russells can be really they, they can be quite <laughs> intense. Yeah, and they're, they're very spastic. Uh, they're on top of her all the time, and she's so relaxed. Yeah, uh, there are three of them. One is fourteen, and then the other one are uh, four uh, and three. So four and three. Okay, at a fourteen. There's a lot of four year old and three year old. What's that? What you say? Your kids, right? Your kids. They yeah. have uh, their last names Albers. <laughs> exactly. Snowflake it's, Albers. It's Snowflake Albers. Then it's Miss Amy Winehouse slash Albers. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's Lissy Lotte Albers. <laughs> so she people are like, it. when we went to the dog park, people are like, your dogs really, they're called Miss Amy Winehouse, Snowflake, and Lissy Lotte. I'm like, yep, that's exactly how they call it. She uh, tried to take me back to the vet doc and I say, no, no, no. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So are you, uh, so our mutual friend, Dunya Rumbots, if you're listening to this and you better be listening to this, Dunya. Hello, first of all. You still really good friends with her? Still BFFs, best friends forever for life? Absolutely. Deeply, you talk to deeply her, how often do you talk to Dunya? <laughs> Five times a day. Five times a day. <laughs> honestly, because, honestly, we talk, we talk uh, all day, every day. Uh, maybe not all day, but uh, we every day because we're uh, doing some projects together. Also, we're merging of, of some of our businesses together. Um, we're having this company together. So it's just business related also, right? It's not just okay. always private. So can you talk about that? What, are y'all, what businesses are you merging? Can you talk about that? Or is it top secret? Yeah, we have a company uh, together, Phoenix Link. And okay. right. uh, I should know this. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, we want to form, uh, build actually everything what we do now with the mental performance program, with the well being, mental well being, and mental awareness programs. We go, because we do different projects for youth, for athletes, for business people i'm doing like i said i'm creating different programs right now 
we want uh, that to lead into a um, like a human performance facility or a well-being mental performance um, facility so people can really get the the holistic way of of getting better like um, nice. psychophysical spiritual and uh, we're working towards that so we're doing little projects right now on on different platforms uh, with different groups of people we're working also on a app for the youth and for children for mental health okay and good this should lead all into this uh, big facility at the end so that's the plan because my dream is to have a place where people can get in and get really the the whole treatment from really good training uh, like the physical practice in general, like not just like functional training, but also yoga, whatever people need for really getting their bodies healthy. Uh, nutrition, right? How to eat really to feel better, not just to look good, right? Really to feel better, to function better physically and mentally. Uh, then mindfulness practice, all kinds of other meditation practices, right? Body work, uh, breath work. Everything like it should be ice baths. It should be everything what what we all know about what we use also in sports and also outside of sports, for people to feel better as a whole, right? To feel complete, connected. I always talk come back to spiritual, uh, mental, and physical, right? To, in this triangle, because we are in the middle of this triangle. We're always like physical, mental, and spiritual, and we need to take care about all those three aspects. And um, I would love to build this facility where people get in. And they get the whole, right? They get the best people who really take care about them. And yeah, they get the whole treatment. Man, that's, that's, uh, we're that's working a lot on of that. stuff. <laughs> Look at that. That's a, that's a, like, so it sounds like you guys are trying to build uh, an empire there. That's really cool though. I love, I love the fact that you guys met in this, in the digital business course that we all met in and you became really, really good friends, like best friends. And now you're also working together. It's so awesome. Like I, I try to tell everybody, our, our former classmates that I talk to from time to time, like if you didn't get anything out of the London Real thing, the best thing was that the network of people, the friends that you made, that right yes. there is priceless. Dr. Mo used to say that a lot. He said, if nothing else, I met all of you and I connected with all of you. And that, you know, that's well yeah. worth its price of admission. And I agree. It's, it, it makes me really happy to hear that you guys... Uh, you gals clicked and you're just really good friends and then you're even working together. That's so, that's so wonderful. Can you imagine your life had you not done it? You wouldn't know who Dunya is. Maybe you cross paths, maybe you don't, right? You don't know her. You're not sitting here doing this podcast with me right now. You ever think about stuff like that? Like I, like I think about it a lot because I think in general a lot about the meaning of life and sometimes I overthink and I go down the rabbit hole and get a little bit crazy. But <laughs> you know, that's you overthink? Nah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Natural, the nature of my mind a little bit, right? Sometimes of this overthinking comes out some good things also, but in general, should be wary of overthinking. Or that's why I do my meditation practices then to embody, to go more into the body yeah. and connect with some higher realms. But uh, yeah, I think about that a lot. About, oh my God, I can't believe what I would do without Dunya. It's beside my mom, most important person in my life. There's wow. nobody who brings out the best like she does. And that's, look, that's the power of connection, of relationships. And in this year, actually, it is really interesting that you, you, you hit on that topic also. The power of community and connection. I never was so aware of this than this year when we got all disconnected. For me, it was normal to fly to New York, to fly to LA. Sometimes I said today, hmm, I think I have to go to New York. So in three days, I booked a ticket. I went for two weeks to New York. After New York, I said, oh, let's see my friends in Miami or in LA or whatever, right? All over the place. I was flying all over the place to China the, the, before COVID started. I went to China. Then I went a few months to New Zealand, from New Zealand to Vegas to the UFC. Uh, and then I stand, spent there a few weeks and so on. And I was, it was normal for me to connect with all those people around the world. I work with so amazing people who are so smart and you know what? I thought like, oh my God, I'm getting really dumber because I, I'm not having these connections with those people who are so mm -hmm. much smarter than me. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, I was not, I did not realize it how, I mean, we all know it, how important community is, right? But yes, find, very important. To find those few people, right? Those two, three people who you can really trust. And what I learned um, with the, in the friendship with Dunya also that 
And she taught me that, look, I'm the mental performance coach. I'm the one who's all about psychology, philosophy all day. But I had to learn to express my true self, my true feelings, especially the dark side, right? Your shadows, that you can really look into them. You can express them to someone and you won't be judged. Yeah. It's the most beautiful present someone can give to you. And she, I, I think nobody ever, beside my mom, accepted me so fully as than she does. And it makes me look how it is, how because we're so scared, right? Our ego is so scared to show something what 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 we think like won't be accepted. Uh, it's not what how how it should be. We're so scared, and we always try to hide it and compensate over it, right? We all all know that, right? That's the problem of all of us. That's why we're so stuck in our life, and sometimes we get negative. The moment you express yourself and you show your full self, and you get still the love and the appreciation. You, my God, you, your levels, like my potential, being friends with Dunya and business partners, my potential went over the roof by who, what I think I'm capable of. It's, a, yeah, it's, it's the best uh, present I got, I guess. Yeah. Besides, it, 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 besides what now? <laughs> besides my dog, Snowflake. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Also, you guys, uh, out of everybody that was in our personal class, I feel like you two are the closest, like you two are the ones that made the biggest relationship of any of us. Like, you know, a lot of us are still friends. I'm still friends with Dr. Mo and Jeff and, yeah. and uh, Lucifer and all that. But um, I don't mean the real Lucifer. I mean, like this guy named Lucifer for people listening. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he is the real Lucifer. <laughs> but... um. Yeah, you, you, you guys just so, cl but it made a lot of sense to me. Not that I have like, I don't know, some powerful intuition. Maybe I do. I, I, that's not for me to judge. But when we started the class and I kind of saw the interaction between the two of you, which is funny to say the interactions, right? Because we're all doing this digitally from different parts of the world. But seeing you two interact in the ways you did, I just felt like, man, there's a connection between them. And they're already kind of like, you know, fanning out over each other. But the fact that y'all are like really, really good friends is not a surprise to me. I just, I kind of felt it. Yeah. Is that weird? Does that make sense? What I'm saying? No, I think there's always a lot more. And you know that there's, the a lot more, there's a lot more to the world than we can see. And there's yeah. a lot of like in MMR, right? Uh, in this sport, I would say MMR because it's so German still <laughs> in MMA. In what, the what sport. Do, why do you say MMR? What's the R? Uh, no, it's MMR. So the A, the oh, R. Oh, <laughs> MMR. Okay, ah. okay, I got you. German thing. It's a German <laughs> thing, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so German. So in the MMA, in the sport, you can see it's all about energy. And I just today I did a video about that. You commented under. It's like you can see how when our energies rise, when the when the fighters, a human being, rises the energies, right? And we all feel that. You don't have to be like an energy healer or extremely spiritual person to know when you feel good. Mm -hmm. or feel like high energy or low energy. And it is, um, there's so many things we can just not see, but they're still there. Like our consciousness level, when our energies, when, when we raise them, our consciousness level raise. And you can see it in many, many MMA fighters right now, the top level fighters, all of them, they awaken. It's so interesting. It's such a spiritual process. Their skill level, of course, they're amazing, but they're awakening beings. They're super sharp. They're in the zone. They get into flow. They, they are kind and compassionate, extremely focused and extremely brutal at one. But it, it is like a conscious thing. And it's, it's just unbelievable what's happening. People don't want to see also so many people anymore who talk, who talk trash. People want to see real heroes. And John Peters says that actually, the hero's journey. Right? We want that. We want a hero's journey. We don't want this trash talk anymore, negativity. We have enough of yeah. this life. And That's why people love, uh, was it Rose Nimanuna? I don't know. Yeah, I was not That's close. That's why people Nimanuna. love her to death because she's that. She's a real superhero. Exactly. Rose Namayunas or today Yuri Prohatska. Yeah, yeah uh, Yuri Prohatska, he, he fought today also. Amazing. Same thing. Uh, practices meditation mindfulness all kinds of spiritual practices talks all the time about consciousness about awakening mm -hmm. about his path to get let go the ego like now the true warriors are awakening again look at this 
And I'm, I'm still not sure if it, it wasn't the struggle of humanity the last one or two years, but it comes up so strongly. And this energy, yes, coming back, it was a bit of a loop I did now. But yeah, there's, look, when you see a person, you know, you know, when you when you connect it to your true self, you know if you can trust that person or not, if you like that person or not. You know, you, you just feel things. When we don't feel it, it's because we blocked. We blocked through our ego, right? We still, or our performer self in sports, we say the performer self. It's, it's too dominant, taking over the roles, and it doesn't let you see what your real self, the real self needs, right? And um, yeah, it's uh, a lot. And with her, it's definitely very special because I knew it. I, I remember I saw her the first time on a video and look at it. I saw the video and I thought, it just came to my mind. This will be my best friend. <laughs> I knew it, first video. And I, we laugh about that. We're like a little girl. Like when you're like five years old in the kindergarten, you're like, I want her to be my best friend. But yeah, that's exactly I want her to come over and play Barbies all night. Yeah. I and probably Dunya and me would be like racing little matchbox cars and doing oh, nice okay. Play. Excuse me, not Barbies. <laughs> matchbox know? cars, Tonka yes. dump trucks, because they're, you know, <laughs> tough girls. <laughs> I'll play yeah. with the Barbies. That's all right. I'll play with them. <laughs> all right. I had one too, I think. Yeah, but mostly I had Lego and uh, but I had the Lego horses and I loved the horses. <laughs> I'm so happy that Dunya finally got over that hump to where she couldn't decide whether she liked me or not. I'm so glad she got over that. I'm so glad she matured and she grew up. Oh my God. I'm proud of you, Dunya. If you're listening to the sound of my voice right now, honey, I'm proud of you. Good job. I'm oh a good God. guy. I, I forgot about that. I remember yeah. when she told me. Yes. Yeah. She told me uh, once when we were talking, she was like, yeah, I am. Um, I didn't know if you were just funny or if you were crazy and that just yeah. made me kind of fearful of you. And I was like, that's so crazy. I've never had, I've never, look, Dunya is the first person in my entire life that I know of that's, that was like very weary of me, right? I mean, there's people that haven't liked me in life. Sure. That's, you're going to get that anywhere. But yeah. to that degree where she was, you know, she said she was scared of me, which I didn't, didn't make any sense to me. Not scared of me. Like, you know, I'm going to beat her up or something, but like, I don't know. I was just, I was so taken aback by that. And I was like, okay, wow. <laughs> I remember. I must be a psycho. You know, now when you said, said that, I remember she was telling me that. And then uh, since we were already like getting friends and I talked uh, a lot about this intuition thing I have, right? That people yeah. usually know me well, they sent me to get to know someone. That, that's why we, when we're joking, I'm a witch. That's what they say. <laughs> They're a witchcraft, right? They're like, please, just because I have this, talent whatever um i can read people's energy well right the energetic uh, profile yeah. and uh, she's like can you tell me what you think <laughs> like is he crazy or no? i'm like i don't think he's crazy. <laughs> it was interesting and we still do it can you imagine she still do it like when uh, when it comes to some business endeavors uh she lets me to talk to the people listen to the people and look at them and when my intuition is like mm, uh, I don't feel good with it. She's like, mm, okay, I don't want to go with that. She still trusts it. puts a lot of pressure on me because I'm like, oh my God, if I have a bad day and I'm energetically not connected to the universe, what will happen then? <laughs> Make a bad yeah. decision. But uh, yeah, we still do it, actually. I feel like I have like a, a smidge of what you're talking about. Mine's more so like kind of like, a, maybe it's energy thing, but I've always based it off of like verbiage, right? Like the first time I, if I meet somebody for the first time, the first statement that they make the first paragraph that comes out off of their lips i instantly am like oh this is how this person's gonna be or this is how they're not gonna be and i feel like if i had to do a stat sheet on it i'd probably bat in like the 80 percentile sometimes i am wrong but i feel like 80 mm -hmm. percent of the time i'm like right on the money and then another thing is also like the when first couple statements come out of their mouth it also determines whether i'm like I really like them. I could be their friend. Or, yeah, they're not for me. Mm. Not that I'm somebody special, like, you know, like, oh, you can't be mm. my friend. But I'm just saying, like, that's the way I've mm. always assessed meeting new people and getting, uh, you know, connected with somebody uh, it, that's not in my circle. That's how I've always looked at it. I'm like, okay, this is how this person's going to be based off of their speech, the way they, the way they talk, the way they move, the way they smell. Yeah. 
I think, this person yeah, smells think a certain way. I don't like them. It's, it could be sometimes, you know, but, but it is like two things about that, right? First, uh, we always like in, in meditation and mindfulness, we say non-judgment, right? Non-judgmental uh, attitude. The thing is we all judge. It's just a natural function of our brain. We judge immediately and we need it. It's an important function to understand like, okay, this person is for me or not, or this situation, I like it or not. The thing is now, how much do you want it to control you, right? So you can have a feeling. And then the another thing is then to ask yourself, okay, do I have this feeling or do I think like that? Um, because it's my ego, my socialized me, who I had maybe it reminds me, this person reminds me of someone I knew, right? Or is it just something I didn't work out, my unresolved issues, <laughs> and I projected on them, stuff like that? Or is it like really just me, my soul, me in being like my true self right now, just not interested in that, not interested in this situation, not interested in this conversation on this person, right? But they're like, they're like um, yeah, there are little levels to that we have to be aware of. But yeah, it's interesting how... We know, we know many things. And that, that's actually the transformation I was talking about at the beginning. We were kind of joking about that, but I think when it comes to exactly that topic about energies, about reading uh, myself better, reading my environment better, I grew a lot in the last year because like all of my clients all of a sudden got really emotional. They had some all real issues with their life, with themselves, with me. So um, yeah, I had to, to step up my game, as I said, and due to this because i had to do some real um soul searching and some self-development i think hopefully i transformed to yeah more i tip my hat to you because you, you um that's a lot of responsibility that you have to uh to have people come to you for their mental emotional spiritual health it's a lot yeah. it's real heavy so i mean it takes a lot of responsibility to uh to hoist that up to hold that up for people you know i don't I, people just a lot of people aren't built to to deal with that, right? It's people like have their own emotions that are already heavy enough that they're carrying around with them. So to carry other people's emotions with you, and then you know, I can't imagine that. It you know usually it's okay because uh, you like part of my work is empathy, right? I have to have mm -hmm. a lot of empathy, but what people don't understand. It, you can have lots of empathy, but still have your own autonomy, right? You keep your autonomy, right? You can have empathy yeah. and we're all drawn in into the problems of the, and that's where you go downwards, the spiral. But so usually I have empathy, but I have my aut autonomy, but I'm a human being, right? I can be the me best mental performance coach or psychologist in the world or striking coach, but I also have weak moments. And in the last months, um, because being in Poland is not, Mm. the Polish mentality is sometimes really hard to deal with for me because it's very different. I'm not saying bad or good. It's just so different from how I grew up. My mom who grew up in New Zealand, this little Kiwi, right? and then my German engineer dad, who's always like enterprising and looking for stuff and very curious about things. And Polish people sometimes are much, a little bit more closed, uh, more lower energy, also in general, right? And it, I struggled a lot here in COVID because I, like I said, usually I didn't feel it. I spent here a month or two and then I went for a month or two to New York. So I never felt it really. And now here I was 10 months and look how it is. Like me, even knowing all this stuff, doing the self-development, working on myself so much, I had a quite hard time in the last month. There was a month where I feel really, really bad because I had to hold the space for all of them and then my mom had some issues and then everybody had some issues. And I had a kind of like a little bit of a nervous breakdown at the moment. It was actually funny. <laughs> oh my God. I completely lost it. It was how interesting it is that you can do so much work, right? I'm doing this work since 12, 15 years. And I didn't see it coming. How funny is that, right? Doing all the meditation. Crazy. Like they do all these meditations, preaching that every day. And that, that is so interesting. Like looking back now, I laugh about that. Or oh, we're all just crazy human beings. I know. Beings. I think that's what, yeah, it's just the beauty of you being, we as humans, we are perfectly imperfect. And there's something yeah. that is very poetic about that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think it's lovely. I love it. I love to see people, even people of high status, superiorities, whatever. 
like they're vulnerable though. You know, they have weakness. They have, you know, it's, I like it. It's, it, you know, yeah. it's the struggle, the, but there's something beautiful. There's something artful about that struggle. With that being said, Daria, what is, uh, what, is there anything else? Like what, uh, what specific, is there anything specifically that you wrestle with currently right now? Like stuff that, uh, you know, you sit at, at home by yourself and brings tears to your eyes or things that you, you're just trying to fight through that's really tough. What are you wrestling with right now, Daria? You know, I, as I get a little bit older, like with 37 now, I'm still super young, but you get with 37, you're getting into an age where you... You look good too. You, at 37, you look real good. Thank you. Um, you know, you get to a point where you've done a little bit at least, right? In my career, I'm not a newbie in what I'm doing. So I've done it a little bit. I, I have the experience. I've done a lot of different things, lived in different countries, places, traveled the world. I've seen a little bit, right? And felt experienced. And what I struggle with, struggle with is that I feel so many people have so much potential and they can't live up to this. They're blocked because they're, the programs they're running, the, the, that they got socialized, the environment they're in, right? It, it's like the, the mindset, the, the lack of belief, the, all those things, what, what, what happening right now, the pressure, the negativity. There's a lot of positivity also in this world. But as we have a negativity bias, right? <laughs> but a lot of people, let's say, it's my impression. A lot of people really struggle a lot. And for me, because I've done, I overcame so much struggle in my life. I've done it. And I know partly how to do it. I have the skills, the tools, and uh, the love and the passion to teach it. And I would love to teach it to the world. And I struggle with that because when I sit at home and I feel sometimes sad and disconnected, and my energy is really low, or I had a nervous breakdown, right, <laughs> this one day, uh, I know kind of how to get out of it, because I have the tools, I have the experience, but I know a lot of people don't. And when I feel like this, I know millions of people feel like that. And it, it, I struggle with that. You know what, I struggle with that, because humanity, we have so much wisdom, so much knowledge, we know how to get out, but because we're all kind of scared and disconnected, and we do what I've done before, really, I met Dunya, like, you compensate, you hide stuff, right, and the, the blocks, your ego blocks, they, they get bigger and bigger and bigger, right, your issues get bigger, not smaller, and you're a fragmented human being, and that's why we're depressed, that's why we're anxious, that's why we're so negative, right, and we have this wisdom, we have thousands of years of wisdom in this world, and tiny little bit of it I read over and I, I use in my work and I, I wish I could spread, spread it more to the world, like help. I don't want people to sit at home and feel like I felt or many other people's felt like I, and I, it's, not, it's not a struggle, struggle, you know what I mean? It's just like this thing you want to do, you want to, this is a big mission. I know it's a big mission, I want, but I'm taking it on. So. Wow. Yeah. You know, you saying that reminds me of a, uh, lyrics from this song i don't remember what it what the song was specifically but it was by this band called bane they're like a hardcore band here in america and the mm -hmm. line is i wish that i could stretch my arms out so wide and wrap them around every person that i've ever loved and hold them and this is coming from like a hardcore band so they're like you know like hardcore punk and it's just uh, you yeah. saying that reminded me of that line from that song yeah. and uh it's a, it's wonderful and almost uh if I wasn't trying to put on a, you know, a big boy face, it'd almost make me shed a tear, Dara. I'm serious. Like I'm, you know, making light, but I'm, I'm being dead serious. That's a, it's a very, it very wonderful. You know, even when I'm in one of the most extreme sports in the world, it's brutal, it's bloody, we break bones and we, right? It's, it's like love is the most powerful force and I will always come back to that. What I, like it is, what, and it's just the only thing what can heal us. And it is not just for the MMA, like a lot of the MMA fighters, like when you, when you talk about Rose Nama Yunus, right? Mm -hmm. It's like this girl, she's like, she's amazing. She's like full of love and care and to the detail thing. A lot of them, a lot of like a loving, compassionate, amazing people, right? It's still, even in the most, we knock people out for money, right? We get paid <laughs> for knocking people up and we love it. Well, we do it. We do it with love. Everything you do, you do with love, and it's. It. I think it's the only way how we can heal the world. And I know people will be like, "Oh my God, this is so pathetic and this is so spiritual," but this is what I believe in, and um, 
I think a lot of people are actually getting there now too. So when people are turning to you for their emotional mental health, who do you turn to? Who do you turn to? Or what do you turn to for your own personal emotional and mental health? Who do you go to? Your mom? The dunya? The yeah. higher power? <laughs> God? What? Mom and dunya and uh, my uh, few of my friends. Um, one is Mr. D. Dobson, Danny Dobson from our course. Danny like, Dobson. I don't know if I remember. He was in our course also. Uh, okay. An amazing mentor for me and friend by now. Nice. Um, very, very good mental performance coach. Really top level. Right. And um, yeah, for a lot of friends, mentors, I turn to when, like in, in certain topics about sports, someone else, about my personal things. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what I learned also? That in general, when I, when you, Mm, start sharing maybe not the whole story right but when you start sharing a little bit with some people just right you know more on the surface level you don't have to go deep with every person right and you, you don't sure. want that all right but if you just if you're just okay with saying sometimes i don't feel good i'm pissed off about this i'm sad about that i feel like i'm really depressed today i feel like extremely negative uh, or i have some negative thinking patterns whatever right you can just sh share that with people it's always the, the, the question is how you say it, right? If you break down emotionally, you don't want to do that <laughs> to everybody because obviously nobody wants to deal with that and shouldn't also deal with that. But um, just, I think it's good to have those um, people you trust, but also we all should learn just to express it how it is. Yeah, I have a bad day, a really bad day, actually. I'm pissed off, I'm negative. That's it. It helps because... The problem is that we suppress it, right? We suppress it. We put the smiley face on and we're like, oh, yeah, I'm all the cute little cool Daria. <laughs> I'm not. Right? Yeah, I got you. Five-year-old Daria, right? Sometimes it's five-year-old Daria who's like ranting and sad or scared and anxious. She will be abandoned, right? And you just have to talk about that just just um, normally. So you don't have to necessarily have a mentor. Um, I think that's that's what, what we should teach kids in school and that's what will be part of the mental performance program for the youth also right yeah. to recognize acknowledge what is going on to express it into into the right way of communication and then to work with it right we should yeah. we should all improve the skills a little bit i'm going to ask yeah. you two questions two new questions that i ask a lot of my guests now in finality for this episode and the mm -hmm. first one is if we had right now do 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 i love it built a time uh, telephone time machine right you get on it you pick the date and you go back to you in the past whatever you felt like um you were at your lowest point and you called daria from that point from this telephone time machine do 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 hello past daria this is future daria what do you say to her what do you say to her about her life about her future what do you say to your old self, your past self? Oh, yeah. The young Daria, the little Daria, right? Whatever Daria, whatever Daria you feel like would need that phone call, whichever one, you pick I would the date. Tell her, like to trust herself, to trust yourself, because we are born with this really innate wisdom, with this like. Kids are so smart. So they, they, oh my God, there's so much intelligence and wisdom and then this connection to the universe and we lose it. We lose it when we get older because there are a lot of issues, a lot of traumas coming in and a lot of stuff what blocks us. But looking back, I knew it. I knew it. A lot of things I knew already. I just, because I got programmed by my environment and I listened to all those people, I, did, I trusted others more than myself. I trusted because everybody was doing it like this. I did not trust me because I was like, it can't be that I'm the only one who wants to do it different. But it was the right way to me because I was a bit of different, maybe not seen on the scale of the world, but in my environment, right? I should have trusted myself because I knew it. And uh, yeah, not get uh, influenced so much by your environment. Nice. But, I like yeah. that. That's nice. My other question is, one day when you are long gone, which will be a very long time from now, 
you're long, long gone from this world. What kind of legacy do you leave behind to your friends and family and loved ones? What's that? What's your legacy? What do people remember you as? What do they speak about in your eulogy? What's written on your headstone? What songs do they sing? What poems do they write about you? She believed so much in me and she gave me so much love that I could overcome all my blockages and obstacles and develop into my best potential. Woo. That's hot. That's a hot tamale. It's a hot potato. I like it. I know. It's a lot. <laughs> that's good. That's like if you really, if you talk about a legacy, that's even now I think about that. Sometimes people get angry at me. Sometimes people are also afraid because I, I call out, not like maybe very directly, but it right. You know it a little bit. Like going with me into a communication can be like it. I yeah, I will say what I think, what I feel, and some people who are just really like where the ego is still so prevalent and so active, they get really pissed off having me around because I show them the truth. And uh, people sometimes get angry. They they get angry with me and they get frustrated over me. And then sometimes they leash out on me. And uh, it happens less and less, but it happened in the past more. But even those people, I think, uh, I was like, okay, um, I give you whatever I, like the love I can. And... You just grow with that, right? And um, yeah, I think that would be the legacy. I, that would be amazing if there would be a lot of people who said she she was the key. You know, she gave me the key. She was she the key. Up. I like that. That's yeah. cool. That's really cool. You are such a cool lady, such a cool young woman. I appreciate Thanks. you, and I'm so glad that we're pals. So glad that I can have a friend like you. From uh, yeah, I, I, I guess you. we're friends. I'm saying we're friends. I'm speaking on her behalf. She might be like, oh, that guy that I know from London Real. <laughs> I don't really, we're not friends. I just talk to them sometimes. Come on. <laughs> Ooh. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Before we go, uh, what can you give away one of your little secrets? What's a drill? Like if I was coming to you as a client right now, and I was like, I, like, give me one, like a drill that I could do, like a meditation or something like that. What is something, what is uh, like a little, a little, you know, can you give a little taste of that? Um, I think my favorite thing to do is to sit in nature. Like when I went to the house now at the lake, okay. I sent you the photo, um, is to sit there in the nature. And yeah, you can call it meditation, but also just being with it. And I listen to the birds and okay. all the sounds. Just listen to it. Just go into nature and listen to all those sounds in nature and connect to your body. Just really like feel your body, feel your breathing. It's not like deep meditation. It's not deep practice. You don't have to have any knowledge about that. Just sitting there and feeling your body, feeling your heart, your lungs filling with, with, with the air, your heart um, pumping. You, you feel just your skin, the wind on your skin, and you hear the birds. Just this is actually lately, and I do so many different practices, but it's my, my favorite practice connecting to myself, to my body, and then listening to this bird sounds. Like it's, it's amazing. It's the most okay. simple practice. And then, yeah, it's for me the most effective, definitely, lately. You heard that first here, ladies and gentlemen. Go outside in nature, sit down, close your eyes, and listen to the sound of the birds. Boom. Yeah. There we go. Before we go, uh, I want to get you to plug in your businesses, uh, the ones that you personally do, your MMA stuff, the stuff you do with Dunya for people that are interested, anybody listening, anybody watching, and they're like, oh, hey, this, uh, this lady saying stuff, I like what she's saying. I want more of this. I want more of her. I want more of her, the things that she talks about, her, her theories, her philosophies. I want her, her program. Go ahead and plug in and how people can get a hold of all your wonderful talents. Yeah, people can find me on Daria Albers on Facebook, on Instagram, and it will be dariaalbers.com. It's just uh, the page is under construction, but after, like I think in two weeks, uh, all the courses will be up, more information, what we're doing, some free warrior spirit, spirit um, merchandising. We'll have some nice hoodies to <laughs> like mindful athlete stuff like yeah I'm doing little things to create a map tribe that's how I call it, the mindful athlete program tribe 
I want to create a community. I want people to be part of it and reach out and connect um, because this is what we need the most right now. The connection. Nobody will be left behind. Everybody should be can be part of the group. And yeah, so people can find me there. Always talk to me. I'm here. That's my what. That's what I want to give to the world. That's all right. Cool. You heard her, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you can find her. That's how you can get into some of this cool stuff she's talking about. Daria, thank you so much for being on here. You want to know a little secret? A big reason why I asked you to be on the show again. It's just because I wanted to catch up with you. I just <laughs> hadn't talked to you in so long. And I was like, you know, I could call her. I could be like, hey, let's have yeah. a phone call and like talk. We haven't talked in a while. I was like, you know what? Instead, I'm going to catch up with her by just having her on the show. And it's a little bit more formal, I know, because this is a podcast show. It's like I'm interviewing people. Really, I'm just having conversations. But yeah, uh, yeah I, I wanted to catch up with you because I, uh, I missed uh, speaking with you. It's always a pleasure. I, like I said this in the last podcast, and I've said it before, I'll say it again until the trumpet sounds. Um, we have great chemistry, I feel like, and I love listening to you uh, articulate your thoughts on life and all that. And it's wonderful. And I feel like I get a lot, get a lot out of it. I get knowledge myself from it, from talking with you. And it's always a pleasure. I enjoy it very, very much. So thank you so much for being on this episode today. So that's thank for you. you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, hopefully we'll we'll do it again. We'll do it again sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Had my friend Daria Albers on here today. MMA trainer, kickboxer, philosopher, life coach, all kinds of things. This lady, she is doing a lot of really awesome things in life. So follow her. If you, if you believe in this stuff, this spirituality, this trying to get a hold of yourself, get a hold of your mental health and make it better, make your, your mind and your body and all of that stuff all healthy all around, then check her out. And also think about the things that we talked about today. Did any of it register to you? Is any of it meaningful at all, right? Do you believe in meditation? Do you believe in and trying to be something more and getting rid of all these programs that you've had since birth. It's like The Matrix. You ever watch The Matrix? The Matrix has a lot of great philosophical, spiritual metaphors in it about unplugging from all the bullshit, all the fakeness, all the artificiality, right, created. And Neo becomes this really great, awesome person. So that's kind of like in the gist of what we were speaking about. So what does that mean to you? If you want to check more, if you like what we're doing here, like I said, leave us a review. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Overcast, Radio Public. Write us a, a review and tell us what how we're doing. And, and if you believe in, in this and this thing that I'm, this mission that I have, I'm a missionary, right? Hallelujah. Also check us out on YouTube, like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell for more content. Tell me, folks, what do you, what do you wrestle with and how can you beat it? One love.